My name is Joy Schultz and I teach at Metropolitan Community College in Omaha, Nebraska. We have four campuses and approximately 30,000 students. I was really attracted to the ideas that I heard through the Bridging Cultures program, the scholars who are doing new interpretations of American history by looking at the Pacific worlds and incorporating more of the Atlantic transnational histories. And so I realized that I could broaden the U.S. survey to outside traditional U.S. borders while also helping my students understand our own national history a little bit better. I decided to redesign my U.S. History Survey course history. I'm going to start over. I decided to redesign my U.S. History Survey courses after being part of the Bridging Cultures grant program through the NEH and the AHA. We were able to hear from scholars in the fields of Pacific World History and Atlantic World History, and I was fascinated with the idea of broaden, broadening the borders of U.S. history in order to help students understand our national history a little bit better. The course I redesigned, traditionally you teach a U.S. history survey chronologically, and Western expansion has a huge part of both halves of the survey course. What I decided to do was start in the Pacific and teach a chronological history from west to east. And in doing that, I was able to emphasize the connections that U.S. students have had with the Pacific world that they may not even know about. One of the ways that I've redesigned the course is through linking Pacific World's history, and I include the Hawaiian Islands, I include trade with the Philippines, I also include trade with East Asia, and I include the Southwestern American Story, California and New Mexico, and of course Texas, but I'm trying to show that those events that we traditionally link with Western expansion are actually rooted in a much older history, and when you start in the West, you don't have so much of the American exceptionalism that you tend to have when you teach a traditional survey course. You tend to see that we have been very integrated from an early date with multiple cultures and multiple places around the world. My students are a very diverse group of students at a community college. They are largely immigrants, whether it's refugees or immigrants from Mexico. We also have a tremendous amount of older students and students that are first-generation college students. We have such a diverse group of students that I wanted to give them an idea that they fit into the American story regardless of where they come from or what their experiences in the United States up till that time have been. So one way I try to emphasize a different narrative is to find out where they're from, find out what their own experiences have been, and work that into a West to East story. Because I really believe that if you can show them why their history matters to the larger narrative, they will be more engaged in learning. The course redesign has worked well when I've been able to incorporate it. I have to admit I have started it as a slow process. So I start with many lectures that I can redesign as opposed to trying to do the whole thing in one quarter at one time. So the first course or the first lecture that I redesigned in this perspective was Lewis and Clark. And I really tried to show how Thomas Jefferson and the early Republic were infatuated with trade with East Asia and were really worried that they would lose out on that trade because of all of the activity among other European nations in the Northern Pacific. So by refocusing Lewis and Clark's travels westward to the Pacific and moving eastward, students begin to see a global history as opposed to just an expansionary one. I would tell people who want to do something different to start with what they're most interested in. I truly believe that what the historian is passionate about, their students will become passionate about because they will notice that that person is invested in their topic and that that person is able to explain why it's important. So because Hawaii and Hawaiian history is very important to me, I started there and I thought, what are the ways I can bring Hawaiian history into my course in ways that link topics together but also matter to me? And in doing that, I noticed that students were better engaging. They could tell that 
I was passionate about something. So I would start with an area of interest, and that might sound, I don't know, self-centered, but I do believe that the way you're passionate and the way you transfer information to students, students know when something's important by the way that you communicate it. Then I would start additionally with where the students are. What are they interested in? And I just, I always find that students are the most interested in what's going on outside of their own borders, whether it's locally in Omaha or our state in the Midwest, they really want to understand how the world works. And so that works well for me because I love to teach U.S. history from a global perspective. But if you try to do it all at once, it's daunting. If you try to stay up on all of the scholarship, it's even more daunting. So you have to start very small.